In a previous video, I showed you how to wire an encoder or a pulsed output device such as a flow meter to the high-speed inputs of your Micro 850. In this video, we're going to talk through how to configure it in Connected Components Workbench so we can get it counting. I've already created a new program in Connected Components Workbench with Micro 850. And if you need any help doing that, look down in the description. We have a whole course on CCW. And we're going to open up Prog 1, which I've configured for ladder, and bring down an instruction block. Then double click on it, and in the search box, let's type HSC. And you're going to get several options here. And mainly we have the HSC instructions, and then we have the HSC E instruction. You're going to use the HSC instructions when you are using your embedded high-speed input. Make sure you're using a PLC that actually has high-speed input, such as our Micro 850 trainer. If you're using a plug-in module, then you're going to be using those HSC E instructions. We'll select the HSC, click OK, and then we're going to go ahead and create tags for each one of these. So I'm just going to double click on the bottom of it and type HSC command, then the HSC app data, the HSC status info, the PLS data. And notice I'm not even having to create data types. By doing it this way, it defaults to the correct data type. And finally, we need the status. So we'll just call that our HSC STS. Now, we know this isn't going to work yet. Everybody listen to me on that. We are going to default in this PLC several times, but here are the steps I see you go through. And so I want us to walk through it so we understand how to get through them when it happens. And if you need any help downloading your program or anything like that, go and hit that subscribe button because we have lessons on all of it. And the moment it is finished downloading, we see this red X up here coming already and then our controller is faulted. So let's go up here and one, do not hit where it says connected. I do that about half the time. We need to hit the arrow to the right of where it says connected. And then we're going to go diagnose the fault. And it doesn't give us a tremendous amount of information. It says an error has occurred in the HSC configuration. The extended fault code is 000. That at least gets us over here to know we need to look at this. So we need to figure out what the status code of 2 is. And to do that, I'm going to highlight the HSC, and I'm going to press the F1 key to bring its help up. Now, we're going to need several tabs open of this because we're going to bounce back and forth through some of them. So just scroll down a little bit, and on the right here, you're going to see the HSC command values. Right-click that, open a new tab. We need the app data type. Right-click that, open a new tab. And we need the HSC status data type. Right-click it, open a new tab. And we're going to bounce back and forth for these, so don't be tidy. Even when we go back to our program, leave these open. So click here, and if we go down a little bit, we're going to see our error codes. And in this case, we have an invalid high preset, and that's going to be in our app data. So double click on the HSC app data, and let's open up our arrow on it. And here's our high preset, our low preset, our overflow, and our underflow. And we can talk about the fine details of these later, but for now, we're going to open these up as wide as possible so that we can make this run. So our high preset is going to want to be one less than the maximum number of a double integer. And that's going to be 2,147,483,646. And the reason we make that one one less is we're going to make our overflow 2,147,483,646. And same with our low preset. We're going to go ahead and put that one less than the maximum negative number, which is a negative 2,147,483,647. And that our underflow is going to be a negative 2,147,483,647. Now, stick with me through this next part. Because otherwise, you're going to go back and you're going to beat your head against the wall. Because we're going to have to do a little bit of insanity on this one. Is let's go ahead, close this out, and hit our drop down beside of where it says connected. And go back to diagnose fault. 
and we're going to clear that fault out. And, and we are not back in run mode, and we have our 850 tab here, or if you accidentally close it, you can just double click on your micro 850 here, and we're in program mode. So we're going to hit our button here, switch ourselves back to run mode, and immediately it's going to fault again. And just for insanity's sake, we're going to go ahead, clear the fault, and then we're going to do it again. And right away, we're back in faulted mode, which I didn't really highlight. You also have a fault light flashing here now. And what we need to do is we need to get these new settings that we just put into this app data into our high speed counter configuration. You can actually cycle power and get through this one with a lot of rustling, but there's an easier way. If we go back here, and that's why we left all these tabs open as we go to the HSC command values, Right now, it's a value of zero, and that's invalid. If we look here, a value of three will put those settings in. So while we are faulted, we're going to double click on the HSC command. We're going to change it to a value of three. And now we are going to diagnose fault, clear our fault, and now put it back in run mode. And this time, it is going to stay in run. Now we are not actually counting right now because we can look at the command values and now we're on a value of three. In this case, we need to get this thing running and that's gonna be a value of one. So we're gonna double click on the HSC command and we're gonna put a value of one into it. And immediately we know we're counting because we hooked our high speed counter up that way I didn't have to sit here and spend this encoder during the whole video. Next, we need to talk about our mode because we left it at the default mode. And as you learned in the previous video, I should be able to switch directions and we should see this value start to go down, but it's not. We're running reverse and our value is still going up. So let's go learn about the modes that we have. So let's go back to Microsoft Edge. And we're going to go to the High Speed App Data tab. And if we go down a little bit here, we're going to see our modes. So our default value is zero, and this is an up counter. The accumulator is immediately cleared to zero when it reaches its high preset, and the low preset cannot be defined in this mode. In an upcoming video, we're going to talk about the rollover because there's some tricks that we need to deal with there, but let's talk about mainly how we can get this into an encoder mode. For an encoder, we're gonna be wanting this quadrature counter phase A and B here, which would be six, or we can do it with an external hold and reset. And we're gonna talk about this in the same video where we talk about what happens with the rollover a bit. So for now, I'm just gonna put this mode at six. Now to change the mode, you have to stop your counter. So we're going the wrong way right now. Right now we've got to double click here and we got to change some stuff and we got to double click here and we got to change some stuff and it's really a pain. We're going to right click the HSC command and add to spy list. And now we're going to double click on our app data. And currently we want to go play with this mode right here. So we're going to right click it and we're going to add it to the spy list. And just so we can see what's going on the whole time, let's right click the accumulator and add it to the spy list as well. All right, now we have all those in. And if we go back over here and go to our app data tab, we're wanting a mode of six. If I change my mode to six right now, it will not work. Notice it is still counting up. If we go over back to our command to stop it, we need a mode of two. And when it stops, it will let that mode change. So we're gonna change our command to a two. That stops it. We'll put a one right back in it. So it counts negative now. And it also counts positive. And we look good. And this happens to you is, you're like, all right, we're ready to start speeding our machine up. And we're at 10 hertz right now, or 10 pulses per second. And if we look at the tens place, it's going up about once every second. 
So now I'm going to put it to 100 hertz, which should make this five go up every second. So six. Oh, man, what happened? It like totally froze up. If we go to the next one. It can't handle one kilohertz either. Well, 10 kilohertz kind of looks strange. And we go back down to a 10 hertz and it goes fine. And so this is the most annoying thing that you have to remember to do. You got to remember to lower your input filters. And to do that, we're going to double click on our Micro 850 and we're going to go into our embedded IO. And right here are our input filters and they are at the default value right now. You can't change them while you're online. So I'm going to disconnect. And now we want to change zero and one because that's what A and B of our encoder hooked to. And this has to do with noise immunity. And we did one video on that. And maybe I can get a really cool scope and do some other videos on it. But for now, we're going to lower them down to five microseconds. And we're also using input two for our Z marker. So we're going to draw over it as well and go ahead and download that. All right, so actually I, I made a mistake and you just made the exact same mistake probably. Actually, I caught mine before I did, but let's go ahead and talk through this. Is I did just download the program. I said no to putting it in run mode because the moment I put this into run mode, we're going to be back faulted. And that's because I just downloaded the default values to it. And so we her app data is back at those numbers. Now, I'll just put them back in, and then over here, let's go ahead and put that three back into our command, and we needed a six in our mode. That gets us back where we were, and we'll go ahead and clear our fault out now, and put it back into run mode, and mainly we're not faulted now, but before we even move on, because you're going to get really frustrated the next time you have to do that is let's talk about how to get our values uploaded because in Studio 5000, we would simply hit the save button and we would get the prompt asking us if we want to upload the data values. It doesn't work that way in connecting components. So we're actually going to hit the disconnect button, which takes us offline. And now we're going to right click the Micro 850 and we're going to upload it. And we're going to upload it with logical values. That's how you're going to get the current settings out of it. And at least we won't have to put those 2 billion numbers in anymore. We're going to play with some other ones here. And there you go. Next time, we won't have to fight that. And now let's go ahead and put our high speed counter into run mode. And we are counting up again. And yeah, our tens place is going up about once a second. And we're at the 10 kilohertz position. And if I switch this to 100, We'll see the hundreds place go up about once a second. If I go to one kilohertz, we'll see the thousands place go up about once a second. And finally, if I go to 10 kilohertz, we'll see the 10,000 place go up about once a second. The next thing we need to talk about is our rollover. And there's several different ways we can do this. We can roll over off of our Z marker, which is wired to our reset in the counter. If we had an up counter, such as we would have on a flow meter, the rollover is going to go to zero. If it's an encoder, it's going to go to a negative two billion. So right here's a video with a playlist about it and how we set this encoder up.